Okay, so let's see if you have the math skills to add these numbers without a calculator. All right, so the problem is 3 times the square root of 90 plus 2 times the square root of 40. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'm going to solve this problem step by step. Okay, so again, 3 times the square root of 90 plus 2 times the square root of 40. What is the correct answer? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So the correct answer is 13 times the square root of 10. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't really know what's going on here. Can you teach me? Well, I definitely can. So the first thing that we need to understand is the rule to add and subtract numbers with square roots. Now, I think a nice way to do this is a simple example to understand the rule. So if I have 3 times the square root of 5 plus 4 times the square root of 5, well, we can add these two numbers with these two square roots because the square root parts are exactly the same. So in other words, uh, this number has a square root of 5, and this one has a square root of 5 as well. So all we have to do is add the numbers in front of the square roots. So 3 plus 4, of course, is 7. So our answer here is 7 times the square root of 5. Now, once we change one of these square roots, let's just do another example here and make it a bit different. So 3 times the square root of 5 plus 4 times the square root of 2. Now we have different square roots here. Okay. Well, we can't add these two numbers because the square root parts are different. All right, so this is the rule to add and subtract square roots or radicals. Now, somebody might be saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, look at your problem here. You have two numbers that are different. I guess we can't uh, uh, add these two numbers, right, because the square root parts are different. Well, not so quick. What we can do here is try to simplify these square roots. So we really don't know if we can um, add these two numbers without first trying to simplify these square roots. Now, what does it mean to simplify a square root? Well, it's kind of like reducing a fraction. Now, there's no guarantee we can actually uh, simplify these square roots, but uh, you need to always try. All right, so what does it mean again to simplify a square root? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example right now. Okay, so what we're trying to do is write the numbers underneath the square roots as factors. So for example, if I have the square root of 20, I can think of the square root of 20 as the square root of four times five. Now we have a property of square roots and radicals, which means that, or tells us, that we can separate these factors in their own individual square roots, and that is awesome, because here, the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of four times five, or the square root of four times the square root of five, and the square root of four is what? Well, that is two, so this is gonna be two times the square root of five. All right, so we can write the square root of 20, uh, if we simplify it, as 2 times the square root of 5. Now, the key here in uh, simplifying a square root is trying to find factors of the number that are perfect square factors. And these numbers are 4, 9, 16, 25, on and on and on, because here we could take the square root of these numbers and we get this lovely integer whole number value, right? So the square root of 25 is 5, square root of 16 is 4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so that's what we're going to try to do here. And hopefully some of you are saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, I know what you're going to do. So we here we have the square root of 90. We can think of the square root of 90 as 9 times 10, right? Now, there's other factors of 90, but uh, we're looking for perfect square factors. All right, so again, the square root of 90 is the same thing as the square root of 9 times 10. 9 is a perfect square. And then here we have the square root of 40. We're looking for a perfect square factor. So we have 4, right? So 4 times the square root of 10 is, uh, or the square root of 4 times uh, 10 is the same thing as the square root of 40. All right, so hopefully I didn't misspeak here, but uh, you get the idea. All right, now what we can do is use a property of square roots and separate uh, these factors into their own individual square roots. So this is going to be 3 times the square root of 9 times 10. Of course, this is uh, 3 times the square root of 90 plus 2 times the square root of 4 times 10. This is the square root of 40. But here, we want to separate 
uh, these factors into their own individual square roots. All right, so we have 3 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 10 plus 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, and now we're ready to simplify these square roots. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Also, make sure to check out my full library of math courses. Now, in every single one of my courses, I give you a full detailed lesson on every single topic. I also cover thousands of problems with full detailed video solutions. I have a ton of additional worksheets, online quizzes so you can get ready for test, and even printable and downloadable notes so you can study offline. All right, so if you want a great, clear, and understandable way to learn math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. Okay, so we are almost done with this problem, but uh, let's just do a quick review on where we're at. All right, so over here we had three times the square root of 90, and we broke up 90 into its factors, but uh, not just any factors, we found a perfect square factor, which of course is nine. All right, so the square root of nine times the square root of 10 is equal to the square root of 90. Now, this is an awesome thing here because we can take the square root of nine. Of course, uh, the square root of 9 is 3, so we're going to have 3 times 3 times the square root of 10, which, of course, is equal to 9 times the square root of 10. Now, over here, we had 2 times the square root of 40, but again, we found a perfect square factor, and we can write the square root of 40 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 10, and now we can take the square root of 4, which, of course, is 2. So this is going to be 2 times 2 times the square root of 10, which is 4 times the square root of 10. All right, so now we can actually add these square roots because the square root, uh, square root parts are identical. All right, so all we have to do is literally add the numbers in front of the square roots, and that's 9 and 4. So the final answer is 13 square root of 10. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out with uh, adding uh, square roots, and the procedure here is the same with subtracting square roots. But uh, if you need additional uh, help with this topic, well, then check out these courses right here. So uh, my Algebra 1 and my Algebra 2 courses have a chapter in them called Radical Expressions and Radical Equations. This will help you out with the things that we're talking about. You can find links to those courses in the description of this video. And if this little video helps you out, again, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.